Hey, hey, noble one. So here's something you may not know, unless you follow me on Patreon, that is. You know, I have a little bit of a secret fixation for metals, whether it be copper, bronze, titanium, steel, iron, anything. I love it. I love it. I just keep buying these cubes for these metals just, 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 just to see them, just to look at them. The reason why I mentioned Patreon is because I got a few dedicated video about this obsession of mine. But that obsession comes with a strong admiration for people who are metallurgists and know how to work the metal. Like, honestly, you don't even need to be able to make a knife, a bronze axe. It doesn't matter. All I need you to do for me to admire you secretly is for you to make an ingot. If you can make an ingot, you're my hero. <laughs> I'm a simple man. I ran into this channel, Robinson Foundry. And yeah, I mean, look at the thumbnails. Look, at, look, at, look at the thumbnails are a work of art. The, look at this. So he made a Bronze Age knife. Well, Bowie knife, so of course, it's, the shape is not historically accurate, but the bronze, I imagine. He's got, wow, he's got a, a copper, for pure copper hammer. Look at this axe. And this, solid silver sledgehammer. Holy mother of, how much did that one cost? <laughs> to make. Well, I'm glad your latest video regained a little bit of that money you spent. Look, look, he's got a puzzle cube. Oh my gosh. Solid brass sledge. Listen, mate, do you sell any of these? Look at that one. Kopesh, Egyptian daggers. I love all the bronze stuff this guy makes. Look at this. Do you sell any of these? Just let me know because I'm going to buy it. I'm going to ruin myself financially and I'm going to buy this Kopesh. Guaranteed. But that's not what I'm doing today. Today, we are reviewing this video, Aluminium Bronze versus Tin Bronze. I am so interested, mostly for the Tin Bronze, because I don't particularly care about the Aluminium Bronze, but I want to see how the Tin Bronze performs. So let's go. I recently made this Aluminum Bronze hatchet to test it out and see how well it works. It actually works surprisingly mm, well, wow. considering it's made of 90% copper and 10% aluminum, two really soft metals. I'm so intrigued by the color because that looks like yellow bronze to me, which would be pretty pretty accurate with ancient Greece and ancient Rome. A lot of the bronze that the ancients were using specifically for weapons like spearhead, axehead, sword and helmets, elements of armor would have looked like, like that when it comes to the color, whereas like statue bronze and other types of bronze that they would use for containers and vases and that would have looked differently because of course bronze can look reddish it can look brownish it can look yellow it can look all sorts of ways depending on the constituents so interesting that that aluminium bronze has that specific chromatic hue I just mix those metals together myself though, so that's not really the best way to get aluminum bronze. Right. Since then, I've gone out and I got some real deal aluminum bronze, something that was made in a factory to exact specifications. Okay. It has all sorts of different metals added to it to make it extremely strong. So in today's video, mm. I'll be making two hatchets, one using that real aluminum bronze and another okay. one using tin bronze, something that nice. was available to people during the Bronze Age. Yeah. I'll make those two hatchets and test them out to see how well they stack up against each other. Interesting about those percentages that he just showed us. I didn't want to use the same hatchet head, so I redesigned the shape a little bit to go for a more classic and practical design. Okay, that's I'll be for sand the casting these using Petrobon, just like I did on the last one. And mm -hmm. if you're wondering, a mold like this generally takes me about an hour if I'm not recording. If I am uh, recording, then it takes about an hour and a half to two hours. If you're metatron, it would take you 15 years. Okay, that's interesting. That's how he does it. Oh, this is so satisfying to watch. Man, this channel. Look at that. Ooh. Uh, this guy must have a lot of experience. I know that these hatchets are going to shrink quite a bit when they solidify, so I'm adding these big holes, which will act as reservoirs. They'll feed the main casting as it solidifies and shrinks. I have no idea what he just said. I'm using sand mixed with sodium silicate to create what's called a core. I'll leave it in the mold so that the metal can flow around it, creating a hole running through the hatchet head. And that hole is referred to as an eye. Okay, you know what? If you want to watch the whole process, please do check the original video. I want to see the axe and how it performs now. Oh no, I gotta see this one though. Wait a second. Wait a second, Tim Bronze. Let's go. I'm skipping the aluminium. Yeah, look. Huh. All right, let's see the results then. Oh my gosh, that looks so nice. He's, be, he's polishing it now. 
Well, they're starting to look really nice. Now we need to cold wow. forge the edges to make them much stronger. Can you imagine being able to do that? I mean, some of you do, because some of you are metallurgists, of course. But, oh my gosh, to me, that looks so incredible. The idea of, I'm holding such a gorgeous item, in this case, an axe head. And I did it. Like, the idea of saying, I made that. Oh my gosh, that's... I mean, for him, it's a Tuesday. But for me, it would be like a lifelong achievement. I would not stop bragging about it. It will be on all social media, everywhere. Every 15 seconds I will be posting about it. I'm drawing lines to use as a guide to make sure that I don't go crazy with the hammer marks. I'm mm -hmm. gonna leave them on the hatchet because I think they're gonna look really cool, so I want them to look uniform. When cold forging bronze, you can actually feel it starting to get harder and harder. The mm. first hammer hits are really soft, but as you keep hitting the same spot repeatedly, it becomes a lot harder and the hammer starts to bounce off of the metal. Interesting. Music to my well, ears. Well, they turned out really cool looking, but the edges still aren't sharp, so I just filed in a really broad edge to keep them as strong as possible. I believe this is what's referred to as an apple seed edge. Hmm. The last step on these hatchet heads is to file in a slight taper into the eye to make sure that the handles will stay in place when I pound in a wedge. Okay. While working on these hatchets, I could tell that the aluminum bronze was significantly lighter than the tin bronze, which makes, makes sense. sense. Makes sense. Turns out yeah. it's about a hundred grams lighter. Well, actually, I was, I was expecting to be now even I can start working on some handles. lighter than that. I'm using American Hickory on these. I ordered a whole bunch, so I should have plenty for future projects. You've All already right. seen this process. So, I, once again, check out the making, and now let's move into the testing. I'm so excited for this part. All right, well, that's it for these. I really didn't intend on spending a whole bunch of time on them because I'm just going to be testing them out and that's potentially okay. destroying them. No, but don't destroy them. Of course, them. everything takes a lot longer than you anticipate that it will. Anyways, I really like how these turned out, and I like the classic design. I think they're really cool yeah. looking. By the way, if you're interested in making your own, I'll have the 3D printing <laughs> files available on my Patreon. So, Thanks, I guess. <laughs> so if you're interested in any of the items that I've used in this video, uh, then don't forget to check out the affiliate links in the description. No, right. But seriously, I'm sure that the, the, the these guys' patrons do have the skills and equipment to, to do that. So absolutely, that's valuable as a resource. It's just that for me, <laughs> I wouldn't know what to do with that. Right, let's see how well let's these see. things work. I'll start with the tin bronze. Yeah, please. I live in the middle of the desert, so I really can't just go out and cut a tree down. No. The next best thing was to just go get some fresh pine from the hardware store and test them out on that. That's doing if really well. this, then I'll move on to something harder. Look at that. Oh, and at the time of recording this video, it's 110 degrees outside in Las Vegas, so that's why I'm in my workshop and not outside. That's fine, that's fine. Yeah, look at that. It's performing extremely well as a tool. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, well, let's I didn't see the edge. Back at all, and I'm really impressed to see that it's almost just as sharp as when I started. Impressive. There are a couple shiny spots on the edges, but nothing rolled over, and it's still plenty sharp. Yeah. I'm gonna flip this piece of wood over and try some more. I think it's performing ex exceptionally well. Bronze. That's why you know. That's why I appreciate this video, because let, let me just address that. If you have ever looked into the transition from the Iron Age to the Bronze Age, even in school, believe it or not, you keep hearing this thing about how soft bronze is and compares compared to iron, and so early Iron Age swords are gonna destroy Bronze Age swords, and it's just not the case. Uh, bronze is a an excellent material. It's an excellent metal. It did not go completely out of use just because you enter into the Iron Age. Sure, iron had its advantages, obviously one of which is the fact that from iron you can make steel, and steel is the superior metal in that situation. Uh, but then again, in general, iron, an iron sword, a bronze sword, it's just as functional as an iron sword. It's just that iron is easier for making longer blades, which is once again one of the things, and iron in general, even though it requires an, a higher level of technology when it comes to the temperatures involved to work it and, and melt it, as long as you have the technology, as I often say on this channel, and I want to take this opportunity again, all you need to make iron weapons and armor and tools is an iron vein. Iron mine, you're done. You can produce, you can mass produce for your army. But for bronze, because it's not a naturally occurring material, but it's an alloy, as in this case, you need at least copper mines and tin mines, which only occasionally spawn next to each other, and oftentimes it means you have to control vast elements of vast territories to connect, which also means that your supply may be disrupted by your enemies if 
they take, for example, the tin out of the equation. You could still make arsenic bronze, but arsenic bronze comes with some problems that have to do with the health of the people that are working, the smiths, if you will, and the metal workers. And so there is a lot that goes into the transition from the Bronze Age into the Iron Age, but it, the idea that bronze is just this soft metal that the moment it gets in contact with iron it's going to shatter in pieces is nonsense. And these videos specifically help proving how resilient and strong bronze was. So I appreciate that. Yeah, look at that. Well, look how that it's one It's still cracked. nice and sharp, so let's try the aluminum bronze next. Yeah, personally, rather than the aluminum bronze, I wish he created an iron axe, or even a, even a low carbon steel axe, but an iron axe and a bronze axe, maybe for next episode, I think would have been even okay, better well, to see. Okay, well, it seems that this one held up just a little bit better than the tin bronze, and that's not a surprise. That makes sense, yeah. There a are a couple small chips at the edge, and that's actually from when I cold forged it. There was a little bit of porosity in this area, and when I was cold forging it, that caused tiny cracks to form. Anecdotal. And that led to the chipping. Yeah. But even though it did chip, you can see that it didn't actually bend or roll over at all. The remaining metal is still intact, so I think that's really impressive. <laughs> yeah, look how that one cracked as well. <laughs> oh, interesting. All right, here's a piece of really dry white oak. Oh, I'm that's not going to go be crazy dense. hitting this oak because I really don't want to destroy the hatchets if I don't have to. If I see that they're cutting really well, then I'll keep going. And if not, Sounds then good. we'll know that we've reached the limit of these hatchets. Look at that. Let's Tim see how well bronze. Tim bronze versus dry oak. Guys, that's dense. Look at that. I mean, I don't know if dense is the correct term, but you know what I mean. It's a lot harder and it's doing so well. Well, I'm absolutely amazed with this result. I really yeah. didn't expect the tin bronze to be so tough. There's almost no noticeable dullness at all. Let's try the aluminum bronze next. Well, yeah, if you want to see how the aluminum bronze works when it comes to the oak, absolutely refer to the original video for the views. Uh, but as of now, absolutely, let's give, him, let's give him a like. Already done it, never mind. So yeah, I really, really liked this video and this presentation. So I'll be looking for more from Robinson Foundries. I'm only interested in the stuff that has like axes and corpesh and old swords and that kind of Bronze Age and classical period sort of materials. So if he does make, as I suggested, a version of this, but he's like iron hatchet versus bronze hatch hatchet, whatever you want to title it, I don't know for the clicks, but if you do that and then you put like, you make them, they're going to look great. And then you make both of them on the, on the thumbnail, I think it's going to, I'm going to click it immediately. <laughs> But yeah, uh, so that would be something really nice to see. Although then again, I would suggest to try to, in that case, to stick to percentages to make sense in period, of course, not just for the bronze, but for the iron. But regardless of that, like if you have someone you could ask for all the details, uh, in general, iron versus bronze, I think would be fantastic to see. But I really like what this channel has to offer. And once again, if you're going to sell this axe, the tin one, even if it's half chipped, although it's not because it seems like it looks really good, uh, but even if, I don't know, the handle sustained some damage, let me know. Take it off your hand very happily and compromise my mortgage payment for this month. And apart from that, thank you so much, Noble Ones, for watching. And I will see you tomorrow. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye. <laughs> ah, bronze.